we we have notes up to week 5 okay uh yeah when it will so be by the uh, yeah okay we'll try to upload it by this week before the quiz ma'am before the quiz yes before yes. the quiz definitely thank you ma'am yeah uh so today is the first session for you for week 8 yes ma'am yeah Ma'am, will you revise uh, uh, all the concepts of uh, this week eight, ma'am? Or uh, yes, what? yes, I I will go through it. Yeah, because I didn't get started, ma'am. This is middle of the week. Ah, okay. Yes. So week eight deadline is this week, uh, Friday. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. So in week eight, you don't have to go through this concentration phenomena part. Okay. So. Okay. it is it has been put into additional content if you are interested you can look at it so uh, in the additional content that has been put uh so there you will find the uh, different bounds uh, like we have already seen shape shapes bound marco bound but uh, we'll also see why these bounds are weaker and we can have an alternative bound which is which we call our chernoff bound so if somebody is interested in reading the chernoff bound uh, you can go through the additional content and uh, try to have a look so i'll just uh, not go through all this we'll go to moment generating function okay. Ma'am, even for quiz two, it's not required, ma'am. No, it's not required. Okay. Sure enough, pound. It's not required. Yes. All right. So uh, we are going to talk about the moment generating function. So we get starts from here. So if you have uh, uh, any random variable x, right, and if you have any random variable x, then we define the mean uh, sorry the mgf that is called the moment generating function as the expected value of e to the power lambda x so mx of lambda we define as expected value of e to the power lambda x where mx of lambda so mx of lambda it is a function from real line to real line so if you have any random variable uh, so it need not be non zero or uh, it means not it need not be non uh, zero mean random variable even if it is uh, just a random variable x we define the mgf in this fashion so since we are going to deal lot with non zero random variable here uh, we are going to talk about throughout this uh, lecture we are going to talk about the non zero random variable uh, not uh, sorry zero mean random variable so uh try to test um okay so uh this is a definition for the mgf so if you have any random variable x and since we are going to talk about the zero mean random variable so let's say the random variable x has the mean mu okay so when you have to make it uh, a zero mean what you can do is you can just subtract the mean from this random variable right you can just subtract the mean from this random variable and this will be a zero mean random variable so how do we define the mgf so mx of lambda we call it as e to the power expected value of e to the power lambda x so this is how we define the moment generating function and could you write uh, that it is a centralized uh, um, oh uh, sorry uh, Or can you repeat? Um, you have written x minus mean, right? yeah. so please write it. Uh, it is centralized mean random okay. variable. Okay. So let's say you have a random variable x that has. Uh, no, no. I got it. I got the concept, ma'am. Just write it. it there so that when we see the PDF. Okay. Okay. So I will just write it here. So it is already written here. X is zero mean random variable. Okay. Thanks. Hello, ma'am. Huh? Yeah. How are you doing? X minus uh, mu. So yes, centralizing, right? So yes, yes. So x is a sample me means 
and no it is not sample mean. no it is not sample mean i'm just saying uh, you have a random variable x and let's say if if it has expected uh, like mean mu then how can you make it a uh, zero mean random variable you just have to subtract the mean right subtract the mean so this will become a random variable that has a zero mean okay a professor said that if you are doing centralizing so it hmm. is giving some clear idea right hmm so that part i didn't understand because x is a sample a random variable and mu is a sample not random variable it sample is... means and mu is a mean so no mu x also is, mean x and x also not, mean no x is a random variable no it is not sample mean this is x is a x random bar, variable not not mean sorry x bar x okay. bar x bar x bar minus mu why, why are you doing x bar minus mu i think professor okay. done that that thing i forgot um no i mean x bar minus mu has not been done okay 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 i think i heard wrongly okay yeah okay. so uh, many of the details uh, whatever you are going to see in this lecture if something is not clear you can watch some content from the additional part but uh, the questions you don't need a lot of details here so it's okay if you don't understand all the okay if i want it. to gather some informations about the these things so where should yes. i go you should go to the additional content part if you want to know okay additional content about... i got but here also i have a doubt i go gone but here also i have doubt uh here also you have doubt uh, where do you have doubt so What is why we need this thing? That is the main thing. So I have lots of problems. yeah. So MGF will see why we need it. So if you have the MGF, you can find different moment of your random variable. So like you know that you have different. Oh, uh, we are going to look at it uh, after this. So you'll come there. Okay, okay, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. For now, just uh, let's look at it. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Ma'am, can you please explain the term zero mean random variable? You want to explain? Actually, I want to know what is the inner meaning of zero mean random. Zero mean random variable is like any random variable that has the mean zero. That's it. Okay, mean is zero. Mean is zero. That's all. so uh, we have two cases here again so what happens when x is a discrete random variable and what happens if x is a continuous random variable so we know that when you have a discrete random variable you will have uh, the distribution which we call as probability mass function so let's note this probability mass function so x is a discrete random variable and it has uh, a pmf fx of x right so let's say x is taking the values x1 x2 up to x n so on all right so what is the definition of uh, mx of lambda this is expected value of e to the power lambda x right so you see this uh, uh, whenever you have to find the expected value of a random variable so if x was a random variable and you had to find the expected value of x so let's say this random variable x has the pmf fx of x okay so how do you find the expected value of x you just do summation of x times fx of x where x belongs to this t of x right uh, but then what happens if you have to find the expected value of a function of random variable so in in, in place of x if you have gx let's say so how do you find the expected value of gx you just do sum over gx e of x into fx into of x Yes, this sir. is what you will do so again if you look over here you have a random variable x and it has a pmf fx of x now we have a function of random variable g of x that is defined as e to the power lambda x right so again it is just a function of x so if you have to find the expected value of a function of a function of x then you are just going to do uh, this e to the power lambda sum over e to the power lambda x into fx of x right and x belongs to the t of x so you you will just write this fx of x1 times e to the power lambda x1 plus fx of x2 times e to the power lambda x2 and so on so this will be your mx of lambda similarly when you have in place of discrete random variable when you have a continuous random variable uh 
so you know when you have a continuous random variable you are not uh, you, you don't say you have a probability mass function you say you have a pdf so if you have a continuous random variable with pdf f of x and support t of x so you know when it's uh, when we are talking about continuous uh, we say the support of x not the range of x right so and it just integrate oh, sorry you just replace this summation to integration uh, your moment generating function in this case becomes integral of fx of x e to the power lambda x dx where x belongs to the support of x so whenever you know uh, so whenever you are given a discrete random variable or a continuous random variable and you know their pmf or pdf you can easily find the uh, uh, their moment generating function okay now here are few examples so like first example was x is just uh, singleton 0 and it is happening with probability 1 so if you have to find mx of lambda it is what it just expected value of e to the power lambda x so x is just taking the value 0 correct so it is just 1 right this was quite easy now similarly uh, all right so you have uh, a random variable x that is taking the value 1 minus p comma minus p and it is taking the value 1 minus p with probability uh, with probability p and is taking the value minus p with probability 1 minus p so this is our centralized <coughs> uh, centralized Bernoulli basically uh, now if you have to find mx of lambda what you will do it is just expected value of e to the power lambda x correct and this is what sum over e to the power lambda x into fx of x so you can just you will just do uh, expected value of e to the power lambda x so 1 minus p and for its probability is p plus 1 minus p expected value of e to the power lambda this is uh, minus p. of p yes, minus of p right? yes, so given a distribution you can easily find the moment generating function ma'am what is the centralized means ma'am sorry centralized it is means? centralized it is uh, bernoulli basically yes right so let's say a random variable y was uh, 0 1 right you know this mm -hmm. is uh, yes no. uh, this is basically bernoulli right mm -hmm. so this p is taking the value p uh, one, 1 with one minus p, p. 1 minus p yes so you you just do and what is the mean of this it is just p p so what i will do is i will subtract p from this oh, y yes so you will get minus p and 1 minus p yes okay. All right. So similarly, you have uh, this example over here. So x is taking the value minus one with probability one by two, zero with probability one by two. Could four. you please once again explain how you have centralized the Bernoulli? Okay. So let's say you have y, which is which follows the distribution, uh, which takes the value zero with probability one minus p and value one with probability p. You know this is Bernoulli, right? So now if we want to centralize it, so what is the expected value of y? You know, this is p. Yeah. Yes. Now, what did we say before? How do we centralize it? We just take the random variable y and subtract its mean. So I will take y minus me, y minus p, and I will say it as random variable x. Okay. okay. Yeah. So if you do y minus p, you will get in place of zero, you have minus p and in place of one you have one minus, one minus p, p. Yes, and p. probability right. remain the same yeah probability right. remain the yes same. okay ma i got very it clear ma'am ma very clear thank you okay ma why we are doing zero mean to find a moment mgf ma'am why, yes, why ma can't we what is the purpose uh, what is the, the purpose we will see, we'll see in clt so all this has been built up uh, for the central limit theorem okay okay got it yeah. So similarly, you have uh, many different examples given here. So you can just see. Uh, so yeah, the coefficient, uh, yeah. the coefficient of e power lambda is the probability. 
and e power lambda x is coming uh, with the yes. terms of yes. this yes. distribution yes so given the given the mgf you can so <laughs> like if i give you the mgf you can find the distribution right yes ma'am so given the mgf you can find the distribution given the distribution you can find the mgf too like if you look at uh, the last example here madam uh, could you please explain that how you get the distribution that is f f x is the is the distribution is it uh, let's see let's see this example okay yeah. hmm. so mgf is given to you as this so given the mgf the coefficient of e to the power lambda x coefficient of e to the power lambda x turns out to be the probability for this random variable so you know mx of lambda is what it is e to the expected value of e to the power lambda x okay and um, when you like wrote this so this term 0.5 this is just the coefficient for uh, sorry this 0.5 is the probability of occurrence of minus 1 so you see this is lambda of minus 1 basically if you look at the first term it is fx of minus 1 times e to the power minus uh, sorry e to the power lambda of minus 1 right now if you look at the second term 0.25 it is nothing but fx of 0 fx of 0 e to the power lambda 0 right if you look at the second third term what it is it is fx of 2 e to the power lambda 2 right so given the mgf you are able you, uh, you can easily write the distribution right so if i have to write the distribution from here what what will i write i will write x taking the value minus 1 0 2 with the probabilities so with the probabilities fx of minus 1 which is 0.5 fx of 0 which is 0.25 and it is 0.25 again hello ma'am yes hello ha huh, yeah x minus uh -huh. mu is a uh, zero mean so zero means what sorry zero mean means mean zero so, so let's say the mean is uh, 50 and random variable takes 0 1 2 3 so if i doing uh, x minus mu huh? so is this a given zero mean so no zero like look at this uh, example over here yes uh so if you find the expected value of x what it will yes. get minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 which is zero so this random variable x has the mean zero that's all okay okay after the doing this thing okay that's all we mean by zero mean random variable okay okay ma'am got it so zero mean random variable is any random variable that has ma'am uh, what i have done is uh, i have remembered how i have remembered it is like the in e to power lambda the coefficient of lambda is the term in the distribution ha and the yeah. coefficient of e to power something is, is the probability, probability. Yes, ma'am. Am I right, ma'am? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Now there is this very important uh, MGF that is given to you, and uh, this is what you should uh, like always remember. This it is going to be very useful throughout this uh, lecture. So. if you have a random variable x that follows the normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square then its mgf is given by e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2 so if you watch if you actually go and watch the lecture uh, it has been given as a very important uh, point here so like you can see the five stars here right So this is this expression is very important. Yeah, this is for uh, continuous. Uh, yeah, this is for continuous. <coughs> Ma'am, uh, and the previous so, one is uh, for discrete. I watched the lecture. Hmm. Okay. And yeah. And sir has pointed out that it, this is very yeah. important, but I was unable to do the uh, last question of the exercise eight point one. Last uh, question. 
important Yeah so i think you you just asked about the sixth moment something no the question yes yeah, sir yeah uh, please discuss that question as well because it is yeah. related to this only yeah so why moment generating function right so what is moment generating can function can you go back to the previous slide please yes. excuse me ma'am yes ma'am few people are unable to join can you please let them in oh okay yeah thanks in the, in the previous one which is a continuous uh, the normal distribution uh, yeah in the first slide we were saying it's basically an integration integration over, yeah over the um, uh, uniform uh, distribution thing right so how yeah so how does that is basically it's just fx lambda i to the power of lambda x and dx right yeah so, so for uh, normal so how do you take the fx is basically the probability and uh, okay. ex e to the power of lambda x is the similar to how we have done in the discrete uh, hmm. probability multiplied by the uh, e to the power of lambda x right so here yeah. how do you take the probability uh, to be integrated over the normal distribution uh, is it possible to uh, expand it just uh, okay uh so how do we find the exp if you have a random variable that is continuous yeah so let's say it has a continuous random variable and it has a pdf fx of x so if you find the expected value of x for a continuous random variable what do you do you just do integral x its pdf dx over x belongs to uh, whatever the support of x is right Right. Yeah, when so, you say support of fx, what uh, is it basically uh, over a um, support of fx is a uh, set of all those x for which your PDF is positive. Okay, yeah, that is all. So uh, this is for a for one specific random variable. But when we talk about uh, a function of random variable, so again we do g of x integral g of x fx of x dx, right? is mostly the composite function way right yeah, yeah. now uh, similar so again here uh, mgf is what mgf is expected value of e to the power lambda x correct so expected value of e to the power lambda x is just uh, a function of x so if we have to find the moment generating function for this normal with mean zero and variance sigma square in that case uh, we know that uh, we know that for a normal for x to be normal with mean zero and variance sigma square you. Sorry yeah you. Uh, some of us who are trying to join are unable to join it's ask, saying it uh, you know asking to be let in If you could, uh, uh, I have uh, let in all the people. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'll have to. I think change the setting. Otherwise, I'll have to keep admitting people. Um. Okay. Um. All right. So when we had a random variable x with. Uh, uh, which which follows a normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma square. In that case, uh, what is the PDF? It is just one upon sigma under root two pi e to the power minus one upon two x minus. So this is x square by sigma square, right? Yes. So this is what we have done here. So this is our fx of x, right? And e to the power lambda x. So integral of uh, e to the power lambda x into f x of x dx. And what is the support of normal distribution? It goes from minus infinity to infinity. So you just integrate this, and you will get e to the power lambda square sigma square by two. So if uh, if some of you have not 
watch the lecture uh, so you will see that this has been given as an exercise uh, to find uh, you can so while you do uh, while you go through the lectures i will so suggest you sharing see. something are you not able to see no we are able to see i am able to see no i i others are able to see i am not able to yes. see yes yes also can see uh, you should be able to see and uh, what is the significant you know is it just lambda is just a constant which is defined or uh, how do you define lambda here? yeah lambda is a constant here uh, okay so uh, mgf here has not been done in very detail uh, i can refer to you some maybe some pdf or something where you can see okay is any one recording or something yeah it is being recorded it says it is recording no i could hear the i could hear my own voice it must be the echo yes sir no, i heard your voice twice also yeah so i am not able to see is there do you know what is what can be the problem or are nobody is facing this problem just just remove the group uh, remove the link, remove the meeting and come back yes no no that i have done just now that that i have done have you logged in through iit official email id yes yes yes, yes. No. if you don't you can't join right yeah um i don't know what is the Sameer issue Mehra, it says it is causing a voice echo ma'am can you reshare the window just stop it and then reshare then probably okay, problem wait. will be solved i believe ladder of facing same issue okay just hold on Are you able to see now? Yes, it is now seen. We are able to see this. Yeah, it's it's visible now. It's visible. Okay. 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 yeah so i was saying you can uh, whenever you go through this lecture uh, i will suggest you to try this exercise uh, so just integrate this e to the power lambda x uh, 1.7 so 2 pi this term with uh, respect to uh, the variable x you will get this uh, term e to the power lambda square sigma square by two. now uh, why this moment generating function so You you see that this MGF is expected value of e to the power lambda x, right? Now you also know the Taylor series expansion. I, I hope you all are aware of the expansion of uh, e to the power x. So what is this expansion? Yes. This is one plus x one plus, plus x plus x square, square by two factorial by plus x cube by three factorial and so on, right? Uh, now we want in case of here what we have is expected value of e to the power lambda x okay so if i replace um, x with lambda x what happens how does it change it changes 1 plus lambda, lambda x, x plus lambda x square by 2 factorial plus lambda x cube by 3 factorial and so on okay now you have to take the take its expectation so i am taking its expected value okay so if i take the expected value what happens you so see you know expectation follows a linearity property so you will just get expected value of 1 plus expected value of lambda x plus expected value of uh, lambda square x square by 2 factorial plus expected value of uh, lambda cube x cube by 3 factorial right and so on now expected value of 1 is what it is just 1 expected value of uh, lambda x so lambda is a constant you can pull it out and you get lambda e to the power x from this term you get lambda square by 2 factorial expected value of x square okay then from here what you get you get lambda cube 
by 3 factorial expected value of x cube and so on okay so you see that uh, the second term you have lambda e to the power lambda uh, lambda times e to the power x sorry lambda times expected value of x second term you see you have a term called expected value of x square from there you see you have expected value of x cube so uh, you must be aware of different moments of a random variable so you have different uh, so if you have a random variable x the first we say the first moment is given by expected value of x okay that you also call as mean then you have a second moment second moment is just expected value of x square and you also have seen this where so when you find the variance of x you do expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square so from this mgf expression what you got you got the first moment you got the second moment then you also have the third moment that is expected value of x cube then you will have fourth moment which is expected value of x and uh, x four and so on you will have till expected value of x to the power n so each of them uh, shows uh, uh, give you one uh, give give you a moment of uh, the random variable and you know uh, hello ma'am yeah why call they they call moment this is uh, expectation right yeah this is called expectation uh, but, but um, why why moment come first moment why this name given what is the purpose why moment is given okay yes first moment second moment third moment like that okay that i will have to check why we call it as a moment uh, uh, yes and ma'am yeah, ma'am what yeah. is the significance of moments like, yes yeah so yes, like if you look at significance. yeah what is the significance right so Uh, we are saying the first moment is expected value of x, and you, what what does expected value of x give? It gives where is the center, where is uh, your random variable uh, centered, right? What around what value random variable is centered? Then, uh, so this is the significance for the first moment. Then you look at the second moment, you get expected value of x square, and this you used to find variance. so second moment has been used to check out the spread of the random variable right similarly you will have uh, so any random variable when you see and we say it follows the particular distribution so we are not saying that it's just the mean and the variance that characterize that random variable there are many different properties uh, uh, that a random variable uh, like uh, there are many character characterization basically for the random variable so it we have we, we have mostly seen this mean and the variance but there are other things that actually uh, say something about a random variable so like expected the third moment right so the third moment gives you uh, i think it gives you the asymmetry uh, for asymmetry for the random variable then the fourth moment gave gives you uh, like the symmetricity of the random variable and so on so um, ma'am ma where do i get this in kind of information sorry can you where do i get this kind of information first moment gives this thing second moment gives uh, that thing more details okay, it has uh, not been done in this course but uh, i'm sure you will find you can find it on internet you can okay. find it on internet yeah okay okay so you you see that your moment generating function is giving a uh, different characterization that a random variable has um so like if i give you a random variable uh, you should be using the mgf you should be able to find its different moments okay so one example has been done here and i'm sure the same uh on the same line uh the question that has been asked for the activity question it's on the same line so we'll just see how it has been done okay so what is x x is following the normal with mean 0 and variance sigma square and we know its moment generating function is given by e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2 this we had seen here right e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2 you should be uh, you should remember it always okay 
So if you have a random variable x that follows a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square, then its mean, um, sorry, MGF is given as e to the bar lambda square sigma square pi 2. Okay. Now uh, we have written earlier the expression for e to the power lambda x. But now if I have to write the expression for the Taylor series expansion basically for e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2. How do you write it? So it will become 1 plus x. So x is what? x is lambda square sigma square by 2. Then x square by. So this is your oh, x. This is your x square it by. Be, it should be lambda. Uh, sigma square by 2, right? Then that would make that expression as e to the power of lambda x. Sorry, I didn't get. Can you repeat? Um, when you convert on the right hand side, mm -hmm. um, if you have to make it as e to the power of lambda x, um, then x would be lambda uh, sigma square by 2, isn't it? Uh... I mean, you know, I mean, what you how you got the left? I thought you were expanding the left hand side and right hand side separately. Oh, I, I didn't go there yet. I am oh. just saying if I have to write the ex expansion for this e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2. So we, we know that if I have to write the expansion for e to the power x, I will write it as 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on. Okay. Yeah, the now, lambda is one. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have to write the expression expansion for e to the power lambda square sigma square by two. So now in place of x, we have lambda square sigma square by two. So what what will this become? It will become one plus lambda square sigma square by two plus lambda square sigma square by uh, two this square by 2 factorial, correct? Then you have uh, lambda square sigma square by 2 q by 3 factorial and so on. It will keep on going. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I was actually considering that as uh, um, lambda x. Uh, so oh, I could no, lambda no. separate and x becomes then lambda sigma square by 2. Hmm. Okay. So this is the expression for the moment generating function of a normal uh, normal with mean 0 and variance sigma square. In general, if I have to find MGF of x, okay, what will I do? I will just do expected value of e to the power lambda x. Correct. So expected value of e to the power lambda x, it will be just 1 plus lambda uh, expected value of x plus lambda square this ha we just saw before right so this we have seen here so this i am writing okay so lambda square by 2 factorial lambda square by 2 factorial e to the power x square up to so on now you just have to this is basically what we have written now you have to compare the left hand side and the right hand side okay so this can just cancel out uh, now, if you look at here, expect for expected value of x. I mean, sorry, don't look at expected you value. Have, look at lambda. lambda yeah. Lambda x, x should be lambda sigma square by two. Sorry. Right? Lambda square. And the value of x should be lambda sigma square by two. Voice is not clear. So. Yeah, voice is not clear. Now, I think uh, why is the value of x? Lambda square sigma square by 2. It should be lambda sigma square by 2. Uh, where? On the value of x. Uh, I'm not able to understand what you're saying. What you're saying. I think he's saying when you considered e to the power of x. Uh, okay. Uh, after yeah. e to the power of lambda x. So okay. Then x, x will be equal to lambda sigma square by 2. He's, instead of considering e to the power of x, he is considering e to the power of lambda x. Um, then e to the power of lambda x is equal to 1 plus uh, lambda plus lambda square by 2 factorial into x square. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let, 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 wait, let me take a fresh page and do it.
okay so what you were saying that you have a random variable x okay and this x follows a normal with mean zero and variance sigma square all right uh now we know that if x follows a normal random variable with the uh, mean zero and variance sigma square then its mgf is given as uh, e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2 okay uh then what we said is if you have uh, if you have to write the expansion for taylor series expansion for e to the power x we this is equal to 1 plus x by 1 factorial plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on okay now in place of e to the power x okay uh, what we have we have e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2 so in place of x now we are writing lambda square sigma square by 2 okay so this becomes 1 plus in place of x just write lambda square sigma square by 2 okay then again in place of x you write lambda square sigma square by 2 whole square by 2 factorial right then you have lambda square sigma square by 2 whole cube into 1 by 3 factorial and it goes on like that now also you know that mx of lambda is the expected value of expected value of uh, e to the power lambda x okay and this is equivalent to so this is equivalent to expected value of 1 plus lambda x plus lambda square x square by 2 factorial plus lambda cube x cube by 3 factorial and so on and this is equivalent to 1 plus lambda of expected value of x plus lambda square by 2 factorial times expected value of x square plus lambda cube by 3 factorials times expected value of x cube and so on now what we will do is uh, since the this is an mgf of uh, normal distribution normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma square and in general this is uh, the mgf for any random variable x we can compare these two uh, mgfs okay so when you compare it what you will get you are getting uh, 1 plus lambda square sigma square by 2 plus lambda square sigma square by 2 whole square by 1 upon 2 factorial plus lambda square sigma square by 2 whole q 1 by 3 factorial and so on and this you are equating with 1 plus lambda e to the power lambda x plus lambda square by 2 factorial e to the power expected value of x square plus lambda cube by 3 factorial expected value of x cube and so on now can you compare these two equations so if you compare these two you see that this get cancelled out now in the first in the left hand side uh, so let's say call this as left hand side okay this is the left hand side this is the right hand side now in the left hand side you don't have any lambda term correct so what will you get you will get lambda expected value of x should be zero right so what do you get from there you get that expected value of x is zero okay now what about uh, lambda square lambda term? square term but can't we consider um, there if you compare term to term mm -hmm. so lambda square sigma square by 2 is equal to lambda e of x right so that would uh, would that not make ex equal to lambda sigma square by 2 if you compare second term on the left hand side and oh, second term okay, on the right okay, hand okay, side okay okay So expected, so expected value, value. Uh, can you mute yourself um, again i'm able to hear myself 
yeah so if you compare the second term what you are getting you are getting that lambda square the coefficient of lambda square is sigma square by 2 is equal to expected value of x square by 2 factorial Two. yes ma'am right yes. now now from here uh what, what do you get you get that expected value of x square is sigma, sigma square. square yeah yes ma'am so you got the first moment to be zero which is just mean then expected value of x square so uh, what was the distribution x was normal with mean zero and variance sigma square right so mean from here also you found to be zero okay so the first moment is zero it matches correctly now you also know that the second moment uh, sorry the variance the variance is sigma square okay so if the variance is sigma square what do you know about variance variance of x you write it as uh, expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square so it is just sigma square which again matches what we have right so what we got we got x the first moment expected value of x to be zero we got the second moment x square to be sigma square okay now what is the third moment zero third moment is zero because uh, if it for third moment you need expected value of x cube and for expected value of x cube the coefficient that you have to look for is lambda up to the power cube but you don't have any lambda to the power cube in the left hand side right so again expected value of x cube is zero third moment is zero now what about expected value of x to the power 4 what is the fourth moment how do you say the third moment? term doesn't have uh, lambda cube okay so uh, you want the third moment right so for the third moment you know it is expected value of x cube and for the expected value of x cube you have to look at the coefficient lambda cube so can you see the coefficient lambda cube anywhere here on the top but we have in the third term uh, lambda square sigma square by 2 yeah, so that, so that will become lambda to the power 4 not lambda to the power cube right okay it will become 6 so we okay So expectation of all the odd uh, odd odd moments zero. are going to be zero, zero in this odd case. Yeah. So what is the fourth moment? Three lambda power four, ma'am. Three lambda to the power four. You are saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any Because else? three sigma to the power four. Ah, sorry, three sigma power four. Yeah. Correct. Three sigma to the power four. Yes, ma'am. So yeah. So for the fourth moment, we need to see the coefficient for lambda lambda power four yes, coefficient lambda to the power four. So here, if you see the coefficient lambda to the power four, this is uh, sigma what? power four sigma to the power four by four by four, right? Into one by two factorial. Into two factorial, so it becomes eight. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And this is equal to Expected value of x to the power four by four factorial. That is twenty-four. That is twenty-four, right? So three sigma so, power four. Yeah. So it becomes three sigma to the power four. four. Right. So expected value of x to the power four. This becomes three sigma to the power four. So you can find all the moment in this way. Uh, is it clear to everyone? How do we find the moment? Yes. Okay. Now I will go back to the problem that was asked uh, in the activity question. Ma'am, do we need to remember all these uh, formulas? Eh? No, you need to remember the moment generating function for normal zero sigma square. Oh. oh. So question is, what is the value of sixth moment of normal zero three? Mm -hmm. So question yes. is. Uh, Sixth moment, sixth uh, moment of normal zero three. I I will give you some time uh, to solve the problem. 
Uh, so let's take uh, two to three minutes and then just try to the process is same you, in place of the fourth moment or moment you have to find here the sixth moment okay. what is the sixth moment of normal zero three Ma'am, I have noted down the question, but could you please show the previous slide? Okay. You have to find the sixth moment of normal zero three. Ma'am, is it 3.55? Okay, I'll just write down the answer start we get. 4.05. Oh. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Then I'll check it out, ma'am. Somewhere I went wrong, maybe. Okay, yeah. Let's see. It. Let's wait for others also. Okay, ma'am. Yes, it's 405 only, ma'am. It's not 355. 405? Yes, okay. yes. I made some calculation mistake. Okay. So, all of you are done with it. Uh, what all answers you got? And 405. 405? Okay. So, all of you got 405? Um, could you solve it, uh, please? I am not still not clear. Still not clear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just go back here. Uh, what we had now, you have normal with mean zero and variance three. So, what is the MGF? So, MX of lambda. It is e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2 right so what is sigma square here sigma square is 3 so this is e to the power 3 lambda square by 2 okay uh, so how will you write the expansion for e to the power 3 lambda square by 2 it is 1 plus 3 lambda square by 2 
plus 3 lambda square by 2 whole square plus 3 lambda square by 2 whole cube 1 by 3 factorial and so on and on the other side you will have 1 plus lambda e to the power x plus lambda square by 2 factorial expected value of x square plus uh, lambda cube by 3 factorial expected value of x cube plus uh, lambda to the power 4 by 4 factorial expected value of x to the power 4 uh, plus lambda to the power 5 by 5 factorial expected value of x to the power 5 by 5 plus and so on it will go right yes it will keep going on <coughs> yeah. now uh, now you have to find the sixth moment so what is sixth moment it is expected value of x cube okay now we look on the right hand side so right hand side will be expected value lambda to the power 6 by 6 factorial expected value of x to the power 6 okay so to find uh, to find sorry to find the sixth moment you need to know the uh, you need to look uh, at the uh, coefficient for lambda to the power 6 right so yes, lambda to the power 6 uh, if you look here uh, you have uh, 27 by 8 into 3 factorial lambda to the power 6 okay now yes, you just compare these two so what you will get you will get 27 by 8 into 6 so 3 factorial is 6 yes, this is equal, equal to, to expectation of x power 6 uh, 6 by 6 factorial right yes so what is expected value of x to the power 6 27 into 6 and we are just to solve it all. okay so 48 i am sure you will get the 405 I'll just check it yes my answer is 405 yeah all right now we'll move for uh, to the next topic so we have all right this is done and now we have uh, how do you find the sum of two in like if you have uh, two independent random variable uh, let's say x1 and x2 and you take the sum of uh, these two random variables how do you find uh, their moment generating function okay so for example you have um, this x1 x2 uh, we are saying it is iid x um, would you okay? be uploading this video ma'am uploading the yeah video will upload so record YouTube streaming is not happening. So we'll upload the recording. <laughs> now uh, here uh, we are saying x1, x2 is IIDX. Okay. And we are saying y is x1 plus x2. Okay. So if you know the MGF, uh, let's say MGF of x is mx of lambda. Okay. And if you have to find the MGF for y, what will you do? So MY of lambda, this is what? This is going to be expected value of e to the power lambda y, correct? And what is y? Y is just uh, x1 plus x2. Okay. And this will become expected value of lambda e, uh, sorry, expected value of e to the power lambda x1 plus lambda x2. All right. And what does this become? This become expected value of e to the power lambda x1. Okay. Uh, into e to the power lambda x2. But uh, it is given to us that this x1 and x2 are independent. Okay. So if identical. x1 and x... Uh, sorry. Identical and independent. Yeah. But uh, we are using this property here for independence. So we are saying uh, it will become expected value of e to the power lambda x1 into e to the power lambda x2 okay now again this uh, x1 and x2 are we are saying they are identical to x so this can be written as expected value of e to the power lambda x whole square 
okay so whenever you have to find the distribution uh, like the mgf for uh, sum of two iid random variable uh, this is just going to be expected value to the power lambda x whole square so once you know the MGF, you know that you can find the distribution too. Uh, you have also seen uh, like this is not the only way to find the distribution of two random variable. You can also like if the problem is simple, uh, there are, there can be other ways to find it easily. But when you have a very complicated uh, distributions and all, this uh, becomes easier. This MGF um, using the MGF. Now here you have um, in the example it has been done for the centralized Bernoulli. So we have seen previously what the centralized Bernoulli is and we saw its MGF also. So if we have to find the MGF for this Y, what we'll do, we'll just square. Uh, so like we are just squaring the MGF of X, right? So if we know the MGF of X and we just square it, that will become the MGF for uh, the random variable y and once you know the mgf for the random variable y we can find its distribution like in this case mgf was 1 minus p e to the power minus p lambda plus p e to the power minus 1 by b lambda okay uh, if we square it we get this term okay now if you have to find write the distribution for y so if you have y and this is going to be fi of y so what are values y is taking? We have to look for what is the coefficient for lambda. So coefficient for lambda is minus 2p. So minus 2p is happening with probability 1 minus p whole square. Then you have what is the coefficient of lambda in the second term? It is 1 minus, e, 2p. 1 minus 2p. So 1 minus 2p is happening with probability 2p 1 minus p. Okay. Then in the third term we have um, 2 1 minus p so it is happening with probability p square so once you know the mgf for the random variable y you can easily find the distribution for y right and x1 and x2 also have to be uh, 0 mean right only x1, then y will be yeah because we are saying only iid then, only are then saying, y will be 0 mean no Ah, yes, yes, we are saying IID, no. So if X1, X2 is IID, X, so, so, based, so both should follow the same distribution what X is following. Not only IID, they should be zero mean also. Only then... Yeah, yeah. so have... X is zero mean only, no. We are saying it is IID Bernoulli P here. Uh, Bernoulli, Bernoulli is not uh, centralized Bernoulli. Centralized... Ah, sorry, centralized Bernoulli. Like we have given it to be centralized Bernoulli. So centralized Bernoulli means the mean is zero. Only okay. then y will have a mean zero. Only then y will have a mean zero. Yes. Now, okay. So these are few of the examples that has been so done here. I will just take... Uh, variables. You can just... This is only for discrete variable, right? This is for discrete variable, yeah. Uh, Not continuous random variable. We don't talk about continuous random variable. Uh, we can talk about continuous random variable. I mean... Normal is continuous, right? Normal, zero, normal. Comma, sigma square, and all that. Yeah, normal is continuous, of course. Uh, wait, I'll give you one problem to solve uh, on the same topic. Okay. So again, this is from your activity assignment. And it says, uh, not sharing it now. So the question is, um, you have uh, three random variables and you have uh, x1, x2, x3, iidx, okay? 
and x follows the uniform distribution with this now what will you get as the distribution of y this is the equation so if we define y to be If we define y to be x1 plus x2 plus x3, you have to find the distribution of y. I think the question is about uh, MGF of Y, is it? or is it? Yes. So whatever we have just discussed, uh, you have to solve using that. Is it equal to um, okay. e to the power of 0.5 lambda plus e to the power of minus 0.5 lambda by 2? Uh, I have e asked uh, the distribution of y. Oh. Ma'am, do we have to say what are the different values that y takes? Yeah, what are the different values that y takes and what are their probabilities? Right? Can I say uh, Yeah, tell me. Uh, you can you can tell if you have found. Okay. Y takes values minus three minus one. Minus three minus one. One and three. One and three. And uh, the probabilities I'm telling in the same order that you have written the values. Oh, okay. Three. What are the probabilities? One by eight. One by eight. Three by eight. Three by eight. Again, three by eight. Okay. Again, one by, one by eight. Okay. Uh, let's wait for others.
Yes, ma'am. This is correct. I also got same answer. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so all of you solve this. It's doing, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am, doing. Okay. same answer i got ma yeah so this is the right answer uh, so what did you do you uh, we have this x uniform minus 1 1 uh, so we know the probabilities are going to be 1 by 2 1 by 2 here right then we find uh, the mgf of x right so what is mx of lambda it is just expected value of e to the power lambda x okay so this becomes what this becomes uh, 1 by 2 e to the power uh, minus lambda plus e to the power lambda by 1 by 2 okay now you have to find the distribution of y and you know y is defined as x1 plus x2 plus x3 so you have to do the cube of it right so you will have to find expected value of e to the power lambda x whole cube so if you do the cube of this you will get uh, the mgf of y and once you get the mgf of y you can write down its distribution okay uh, any doubt in this no ma'am okay All right, so this is done. Uh, now we have MGF of a sample mean. Okay, ma'am. Once go to the previous slide, ma'am. Okay. And not this one. This one. Just where you have explained this. Earlier, earlier slide. Oh, that slide. Yeah, that slide. That slide. Oh, okay, that slide is some little sweet. Yeah, there. Oh, uh, do you have anything to ask from here? No, ma'am. Just I, I am just going for the tabular form once. That's it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You can find this question. This is from activity only. Okay, ma'am. I don't understand the concept of centralized Bernoulli. Centralized Bernoulli. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm coming to that. Wait. I just. Oh. All right. Okay. so what we are saying is uh, you have a random variable x okay and we are saying this is bernoulli okay so bernoulli with half oh in instead of half we just write in general p okay yes. this is bernoulli p now if it is bernoulli p you know this is going to take two values 0 and 1 correct yes. and what is the mean of this uh, distribution yeah. it is p mu is p now if i want to convert this random variable x 
to uh, a random variable whose mean is zero. Okay, so if we have to convert this to a random variable whose mean is zero, what will I do? I will just subtract its expected value from the random variable. So I will do x minus expected so value of x. Translating okay. it. So yes. So if you do this, you will just get minus p and one minus p. With probabilities. Uh... With probabilities. One minus p and p. Okay, got it. Yeah, thank you. So this is our centralized Bernoulli. Now uh, let's take in place of uh, Bernoulli p. Let's take x to be Bernoulli one by two. So if it is Bernoulli one by two, uh, so again, what is a centralized Bernoulli? Cent uh, centralized uh, Bernoulli here. Minus uh, half. Minus half. Yes. So it will be minus half. And come half. Half, right? Yeah. And it is the with probability is one by two, one by two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now what is the uh, MGF of this random variable x? What is the MJ from this? It will be half into okay. e raised to, e raise to power la lambda minus half. I mean, minus, minus half lambda minus lambda, lambda, lambda by two. Plus lambda by two. Yeah. Plus half into e raised to lambda by two. Okay. So this is just e to the power minus lambda by two plus e to the power lambda by two by two. Okay. Yeah. Now we are going to look at. Uh, now we are going to look at uh, MGF of sample mean. Okay, so we are going to talk about MGF of sample mean. So let's take you have a sample x one, x two, x n that is i i d x, and this x here, right? This x here, we have taken it as centralized, centralized Bernoulli p. Centralized, this x is centralized Bernoulli 1 by 2. Okay. So we have x1, x2 up to xn, that is centralized Bernoulli 1 by 2. And we just saw that its MGF is e to the power minus lambda by 2 plus e to the power lambda by 2 by 2. This is MGF. Now, if I want to find the MGF of sample mean, then what happens? I want to find the MGF of X bar. So basically M of X bar lambda. So this is what? This is expected value of e to the power lambda X bar. Okay. And what is X bar? X1 plus X2 plus X3. Yeah. So x1 plus x2 plus xn by n. Okay. And this becomes what? This becomes expected value of e to the power lambda x1 by n. Or you can write lambda x1 by n plus up to xn by n. Okay. So what is expected uh, what is expected value of uh, e to the power lambda x1 by n plus uh, up to xn by n? Uh, expected yeah, value times. of lambda x by x by n uh, the whole raised to n. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So this is just expected value of e to the power. Uh, we can write this right. So lambda by n. And since this is i i d x, okay. So if it is i d x, uh, we can. To just write this as wait. 
e to the power lambda x by n ma'am. Expectation of e to the power lambda x by n. Oh, uh, x. Oh, can you repeat? Expected value of e to the power lambda e. x. Uh, lambda x. Uh, mm -hmm. Into n by n. Into n by n. X one plus x two is. Uh, okay. See. Uh, just write it here again. So we have said that uh, this x one, x two, up to x n, they are i i d x. Okay, they are i i d x. So if you take x bar, so x bar is x one plus x two plus x n by n. Okay, then we get x one by n plus x two by n plus up to x n by n. All right. So all this x1 by n comma x2 by n up to xn by n will also be iid x by n right yes, hmm? then what we can do is um, since we have this here and we are writing expected value of e to the power lambda x1 by n plus x2 by n plus up to xn by n okay so what we have seen before we have seen that if uh, you have a random variable x and its mgf is given as mx of lambda then if you have y which is x1 plus x2 plus up to xn then its mgf is given by expected value of e to the power lambda x to the power n where x1 x2 uh, x1 x2 xn is iid x okay this we have seen before now what we are saying here is uh, we have x1 plus x2 x1 by n x2 by n up to xn by n is iid x by n okay and we are take let's write it as s s to be uh, this Let's write this as to be this. Okay. Now, if uh, okay, if x is m x of lambda, okay, then this sum, if you take the sum, it will become expected value of e to the power lambda x by n, right? This one. to the power n and x by n is uh, 1 by 2 n x by uh, the two values of x by n are minus 1 by 2 n and uh, 1 by uh, 2 n minus 1 by 2 n and uh, 1 by 2 n, by 2 n. because x is a centralized uh, Bernoulli yeah i think i should write it somewhere else okay wait so m what was mx of lambda mx of lambda was e to the power minus one by uh minus lambda by two plus e to the power lambda by two by two now if we want to find the distribution uh, like mg for x by n then it becomes e to the power minus lambda minus by lambda 2n. by 2n. 2n uh plus e to the power lambda by 2n by two by two So if you have to find the distribution for, um, sorry, MJ for this summation, the sample mean, you will just get, you will just get this. Uh, is it clear why, how we are getting this term? Yes, ma'am. It's clear, no? Okay. Now, now you got mx of lambda to be e to the power uh, lambda upon 2n plus e to the power minus lambda upon 2n divided by 2 whole to the power n. Okay. Now, what happens? The next slide. So, this is uh, a moment generating function for the sample mean. Now, what happens when n goes to infinity? Uh, 
lambda by 2n become 0 lambda by 2n become 0 so, so it the power 0 become 1 1 1, one plus 1 that is 2 by 2 that is 1, one. So one. as so as n tending to approaches to infinity, your mx bar of lambda approaches to one. one. So okay. Uh, what has been done here is like uh, uh, you, the graph you see here. So different values of n we take. So for n equal 1, you see you have this um, parabola over here. If And as the value of n increases, this converges to 1. So you can see that all these MGFs are converging to 1. Uh, th this was done... Uh, because as n as n yeah. increases, x bar becomes uh, zero. As n increases, x bar becomes bar zero. Becomes okay. Okay. Can, zero. can you tell how? As n increases, that because uh, the uh, mean of that uh, centralized Bernoulli is zero, right? So as mm -hmm. the, as you increase the number of n mm -hmm. slowly, uh, according to the law of weak. Uh, uh, weak law of large numbers. Weak law of large numbers. X bar will tend to zero. X bar will and, tend to zero. Yes. And uh, mg, uh, this uh, moment generating function of uh, uh, zero is one. Yes. Moment yeah. That, yeah. So what you tell is from the moment like weak law of large number, but even if you just look at this. Uh, expand expression over here for mgf uh when you take the limit for intending to infinity you can see that this mx of mx power of lambda goes to one yes. yeah now so what you said is right so if you use weak law of large number what does it say it says probability that mod of x minus uh, expected value of x greater than delta this becomes less than equal to uh, sigma square by n delta square Yes. So, right. so as the value of n increases, uh, it goes to zero. This bound mm -hmm. goes to zero, right? So this bound goes to zero. It means we are saying this, um, like in place of in place of x, if we have x bar. So if we write x bar, x bar, right? So expectation of x bar becomes nearer to x bar, and x bar here is yes. zero. It's nothing but expected value of x, which is zero. So this goes to zero. And uh, moment generating function of zero is one. Just one, yeah. So uh, okay, in this example, we saw the MJ for the sample mean. But what happens if we do uh, in place of n, we do uh, we want to find the uh, MJ for y equal x one plus x two plus up to xn by root n. So the same process that we have used to find the mj for the sample mean, we can do the same thing. So it will become here that uh, x1 by root n up to xn by root n should be iid x by root n. Okay, And again, we know the mj for x. And we can find the mj for x by root n. And once you find the mj for x by root n, we can find the mj for y, which becomes uh, x e to the power lambda upon 2 root n plus e to the minus lambda upon 2 root n by 2 to the power whole n, right? So uh, how do we get this is clear? This part is clear, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, the expectation and variance are given. Uh, ex uh, expectation and variance uh, for what? Uh, in this example, oh, okay. X is, x is centralized for Nolly. Again, x is centralized, the same x we are using. So x is centralized for Nolly 1 by 2. Uh, this was not mentioned here in this particular example. Yeah, in the, slide, in, the, in the slide, it is not mentioned, but yes, uh, I mean, when you watch the lectures, right? You will see that uh, X is taken as centralized Bernoulli house. 
Okay. So uh, we'll get uh, the moment generating function to be uh, this. Now, as you keep on increasing the value of n, you will see that all of them converge at some uh, point, basically. And what is that point? That point comes out to be the e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2. And what is this point? And wh what is this? This is nothing but MGF of normal with mean 0 and variance sigma square. Right? So you, you see that uh, when we try to find uh, the MGF for uh, x1 plus x2 plus xn by root n, when we did this 1 by root n scaling instead of 1 by n scaling, all of this, so this MGF, uh, this MGF gets converged to this e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2. And it turns out to be the MGF for normal with mean 0 and variance sigma square. Okay, again, you have different example taken. Um, so not only for Bernoulli, for all distribution. This for is all distribution, yeah. For all distributions which are uh, zero mean. Zero mean random variable, yes. IIDs, zero mean. Yes, zero mean IIDs random variable. You see that when you take this one by root and scaling, all of them converge uh, converges to this normal with mean zero variance sigma square. So that is the idea behind the central limit theorem that we are going to see now. So it says uh, when you have uh, n iid random variable x whose expectation is zero and variance is sigma square and if we take y to be x1 plus x2 plus xn by root n then the moment generating function of y becomes converges to this normal with mean zero weight in sigma square. Okay. So any distribution doesn't matter what distribution you have. If you take enough sample, I mean, if you take uh, samples of enough size, enough size and like uh, good enough size, you take pick such n. Uh, so generally we say n should be at least 30. So doesn't matter what distribution the sample are coming from. If your n is sufficiently large, then it will converge to a normal distribution with mean uh, 0 and variance sigma square. Now, uh, what uh, in general, in general, what we say is. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Go to the previous slides. Previous slides. Previous slides. Go to the. Uh, okay. up. This one? No, not this no, one. No, no. This one? Not this one. This one? Not, yes, this one. OK. No. So here, m of y of lambda equals to hmm. e to the power lambda by 2 root uh, 2 into root over n uh, plus e to the power minus uh, lambda by 2 root over n, right? By mm -hmm. divided by 2 root to the power uh, uh, n, that is mm -hmm. comes out e to the lambda square sigma square by 2, right? As n approaches to infinity, uh, we say it can m, m y of lambda converges to e to the power lambda square sigma square by 2. Okay, okay. How if n is uh, increases, then e to the e to the power lambda by uh, two into root over n, it just comes out one, right? Mm. No. Wait. If, can you repeat what did you say? So if n is increasing, so e mm -hmm. to the power lambda not e to the lambda by two root over n, it comes out one, right? Any increasing, so root over one. Uh, no, sorry. Root over infinity so wh wh what is the value root over infinity no that uh, like currently what you're doing is wrong so you can check this uh, limit okay okay limit yes yes I can you can check it. this limit uh, uh, have you studied uh, limit uh, yes yes you have studied right? on also yeah so. just just check that okay okay so this will converge to e to the power lambda square sigma so square by two. one thing why when uh, why we need central uh, central limit theorem or 
MGF? Why we need? Uh, yeah, like you don't. Uh, I mean, just to give you a sense, like how uh, this one by root and scaling when you're doing uh, it, any random variable coming, uh, any samples uh, and sa ID samples coming from any distribution converges to uh, a normal distribution with mean zero, variance sigma square. Uh, this is a generalized form, but when you uh, like many places, you will just see like in general, what it says is like if you have uh, if you take samples from if the samples are coming from any distribution and if your N is sufficiently large, so sufficiently large as in like you take N to be at least 30, uh, then when N is at least 30, we say it is sufficiently large. So if you take sample, uh, if you take IID samples, from any distribution, it need not be a normal distribution. It can come from any distribution. Uh, and if it does mean uh, expected value mu, so if we have x1, x2 up to xn. Let's, ma'am, uh, let's, I have a one data is, that is big, very big, uh, large okay. data. Okay. So for that data, uh, how do I centralize things? How do I use central? Yeah, I, I, I will just, I'm just going to tell you. So if we have variance of x to be sigma square, okay, then what we say is uh, your sample mean, okay, sample mean x bar minus mu upon sigma upon root n, it, it is nothing but normal with mean. Here, also, here, ma'am, I, I have a doubt in earlier times. X my x bar minus mu, that hmm. means mu is just a mean, x bar also mean of sample variance, right? X bar is a sample mean. The sample yeah. means so mm. okay so mm. we are uh, my, uh, you're subtracting that thing right yes so both are mu so what is no, the no, difference no. both are that? both are not mu expected value of x bar is mu there's a difference no so uh, mu which term uh, mu okay i can get mu which term both are giving the same uh, distribution. Both are come from same distribution, right? No, also... x, x bar is what? See, we are writing x1, x2, xn, iid, x. So mu is population. x1, x2, xn by n. This is coming from a sample. This is sample mean. Okay? Yes. And you take its expected value. This comes out to be mean. That is nothing but expected value of x. They are different. Uh -huh. Okay, I, okay. Earlier we are used uh, expectation equals to mu, right? Expectation of x equal mu. Expectation of x equals to mu. Okay, yes, yes. Now I... also this you can write it as like if you say your s is x1 plus x2 plus up to xn. Okay, so you will say s minus n mu upon sigma under root n is also normal with mean zero variance one where s is what s is x1 plus x2 plus xn so uh, the a quick way to remember this is like uh, if you are dealing with so in the lecture you will see this form okay so yes. s s is x1 plus s is x1 plus x2 plus up to xn ID. Okay, what is the expected value? This is just going to be n mu. Okay, yes. What is variance of s? It is just going to be n times sigma square. And what is standard deviation of s? This is going to be under root of n sigma. Right? So, what we have written is this s, okay, this s minus its expected value. So, minus n mu, okay divided by its standard deviation, that is sigma under root n. We are saying this follows a normal distribution with mean zero and variance one. Now this expression and x bar minus mu upon sigma upon root n, they both are same. You can just convert this into this form, how? So you have s minus n mu upon sigma root n, okay? And what is S? S is x1 plus x2 plus up to xn minus n mu divided by sigma root n. Now you just divide the numerator and denominator by n. So when you divide it, you will get x bar minus mu divided by sigma upon root n. Right? So it becomes normal with So that is the theoretical understanding, right? 
theoretical understanding yeah so for data for any data for any regular uh, data so how yeah. do i use these things so that is yeah so what we are saying is like any um uh, uh like if you have any distribution and the you are taking iid sample from such distribution then so one thing ma'am Huh? For any big uh, data, that is follow normal distribution, right? It will follow normal distribution. That means zero you know, and variance one. Okay. For any for any data, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a question. If you go yeah. to, go to the previous slide, okay. uh, we said uh, that uh, okay. X was Bernoulli distributed with the uh, it was a centralized Bernoulli uh, with the uh, p equal to uh, half, right? Uh -huh. Okay. And then uh, we arrived at uh, that it would be normally distributed with zero uh, means zero. Mean zero variance sigma square. So yeah. earlier we had seen that the variance for the Bernoulli was one by four, right? Hmm. Yeah. Would this normal also have the same variance? This normal also, yeah. I mean, when you uh, this sigma is what? Uh, so if you take x to be uh, x to be centralized Bernoulli 1 by 2 so you had uh, sigma square to be 1 by 4 right. so you just put sigma square to be 1 by 4 here so it would be the same one right yeah yeah okay. so there we had shown using one example but it works for in general any uh, distribution okay now let's look at few examples that will help you uh, solve how to find the probability using CLT. So let's say, uh, okay. All right, it's a very basic example given here. So X1, X2, X and IIDX, why you have defined it as some of these random variable, okay. X follows this distribution. Okay, so using CLT, what what you have seen, you have seen that this y minus n mu upon sigma root n follows the normal zero one. Okay. Now, uh, what is mu here? Given this distribution, we have seen mm -hmm. mu is zero and variance sigma square is pi by two. Okay, so this y divided by Sigma is root 5 by root 2, okay, and root n. So basically, it is y by uh, y root 2 divided by uh, root 5n. All right, and we are saying this is this should be normal 0, 1. Okay, now let's say I want to, uh, I am giving you. Uh, to find what is the probability that this capital Y is greater than some delta N. Okay. So what you will do is you will try to bring this Y to Y minus N mu upon sigma root N form. Okay. So here we have already uh, tried to bring this down. So this is nothing but Y upon root 5 N by 2. So the same thing you will do on the other side. So what is the mean? It is sigma n uh, delta n minus zero, right? And you will have to divide it by uh, root five n by two. Okay. This is clear. This part. The second step is clear. No, I didn't understand. Um, I didn't understand, understand. probability okay. of y okay. delta n. Okay, let's say you want, let's say you have to find the probability that y is greater than delta n. All right. What is y? Y is given to be x1 plus x2 plus up to xn, right? Uh, but we don't know what the distribution of this x1 plus x2 plus xn be. So, what does the central limit theorem says? It says that your y minus n mu upon sigma root n, this should follow a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. So we will try to bring this y 
to this normal zero one form. Okay. So how do we bring this to the normal zero one form? We'll have to subtract the mean of. Uh, we'll have to subtract n mu from y, and we have to divide sigma root n by from this uh, numerator part, right? So we will write it here. So y minus n mu. So you have seen that uh, mu is zero for the standard variable x. Okay. So this becomes y minus zero. And sigma square comes out to be five by two. So if you write sigma, okay, so sigma will be under root of five by two, and this is under root n. So it becomes this. So if you have subtracted zero from the left hand side, you will also have to do the same on the right hand side. So we'll do delta n minus zero, and in the denominator again you will have under root five n by two. All right. So now you know that this is a normal random variable with mean zero and variance one. Okay. So can you write this y upon under root five n by two as z? You know you have seen this z before, right? What is this z? This is normal mean zero and variance one. PDF of uh, PDF of the standard normal random hmm. variable. So you got p. Of z greater than four upon and oh sorry um this is wrong so z uh, delta n by under root of five n by two right and this is equivalent to one minus f c of so you can again simplify it further so it becomes delta two by five n uh, root Root two by five. By root five by two, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is the probability that y is greater than delta n. Now you will see that once you increase, keeping the delta constant, like so, we have kept the delta as one constant. If you keep on increasing the value of n, okay. If you keep on increasing the value of n, how does your probability changes? So it it goes uh, down and down. The probability keeps on decreasing. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So these are the very basic example from CLT. Uh, let me take one uh, exercise from uh, the lecture. So not the lecture. From your activity. Reading. Okay, let me share the screen here. We'll do one question and then we'll close the session for today. Okay. Can you say? Will there be one more session after this? Uh, a different uh, day. Uh, yeah, there will be two more sessions. There will be two more sessions. So one session is on Thursday, and uh, one is on Friday. You can check in the calendar; it's updated. Yes. Um, week eight deadline. It has, been, it has been extended to Friday. Okay. You you would have received the notification. I mean, announcement. Yeah. Then this uh, yes. CDF of uh, standard normal. Mm -hmm. If we want to know the CDF of standard normal, the values. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give a very, uh, uh, I mean, a reliable uh, table for that? A uh, table you can find it here, no? I mean, right. On the internet you can find it, but. Uh, uh, yeah. Wait. So you have. Uh, Standard. Yeah, you can use this. Ma'am, week nine live session is already started, or it was mistakenly notified in the Google Calendar. 
No, week nine session has not been started yet. Okay. So I have put there this, are calculators uh, also available, and uh, there are you have calculators also, also available. available. Yeah. But, uh, any uh, table which is reliable, if you can upload this, this is uh, reliable. You can use this. Okay. Can you share this, ma'am? Uh, I have just put it in, in the link in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. You. So I don't. I don't see an email extending the deadline for week eight assignment. Uh, yeah. Nobody, get... no one of you have received. It's mentioned in the graded assignments uh, due date, due time. Uh, but uh, you have not received the announcement. I have received today morning. We received an email. You have received no? Yeah, you. She would have received week eight. Just check once in the announcement. You would have received. So, all, uh, do all of you know how to check the standard normal table? This is giving no, CDF, right? This is giving yeah, CDF. it's giving CDF, yes. So, minus... Okay, minus 390... Three, so, yeah, if you have to find uh, FC of minus... 3.9, it will be 0 0.0005. Minus 3.91 uh, is 0. Point again 0, 0, 0, Yeah, again it is same. If it is 92, then it is 0, 0, 0, 0.004. And yes, this is giving sir. CDF, right? This is giving you CDF. So FC of minus 3.92. FC okay. of minus 3.94. Okay. So like if I ask what is the... What is FC of minus 1.96? 1.96. Uh, so it is given here. 1.96 is 0 0.97500. Zero. No, it is 0 0.025. 1. Oh, you're talking minus about 1. Minus, minus, minus 1. Okay, minus minus it is 0 0.025. 0 0 yeah. So all of you know how to uh, check the table? No, ma'am. Yeah. No, uh, uh, like okay, one or two person were answering. So, um, okay, so let's see. Uh, let's say I have asked you what is, um, what is FZ of minus one point nine six. Okay, so what I will do is, uh, you have minus Z to be minus one point nine six. So I will look at, um, minus one point nine on this, uh, left side column. So you see, you have one minus one point nine here, right? Row now, row. yeah, this row. Now you will go to this row and you will look at where is point zero point zero six. So okay. zero point zero six is here. Now, if you go down, you will see point zero it's two given to be zero point zero two five. Okay, ma'am, it looks similar to this. Uh, see, uh, logarithm table. Log logarithm. Table. Uh, I have completely forgotten that. Oh, yeah. If you can recall from there, so good. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. So, do you want to solve the question for CLT today, or you want in the next class? Next class, please. Next class. Okay. So, next class will be on Thursday, I suppose. So, next class, whatever topics have been left. Uh, we'll cover so it's uh, the small portion that is left uh, and then we'll solve few problems so i would suggest uh, watch the lectures uh, and try to solve few problems at least from clt and come yeah it will help ma'am today what was happening uh, i joined with companion room it took uh, half an hour to me join the session uh, it I took you know. half an hour to join the session. Oh, okay. Yeah, me too. 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I'll have to change some setting then. Uh, let me check. It I should not happen from next time. Half an hour session. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I'll have to change some setting. Let me uh, check what's the issue here. Uh, so I think from next time, we'll not have to ask for joining the session you can directly join thank you ma we'll put the recording uh, by tomorrow morning should get updated yeah 
and slides also ma'am sorry and slides slide. uh slides is the same that sir as used you can refer to that so you ma'am actually you can write some simple method also <laughs> that's why i'm asking us uh, i don't think i have written simple methods there okay but still i will share that slides okay thank you ma'am yeah thank thank you all i will uh, yeah thank you we'll thank you thank you thank you thank you all